Midnight Movie Talk is live here on this Friday. I am Eric Weber. Rare special edition here on this Friday. Usually we're dark, but when we have things to talk about, we just jump on and go live. And we are early. We're early tonight on Midnight Movie Talk on this Friday. Welcome in again. Eric Weber, ready to rock and roll. And, you know, we're going to go through Midnight Eastern. So it will still qualify as a midnight movie talk i mean listen we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about the number one thing for me very clearly right now is what is happening with lightyear it appears to be crashing right now let me share my screen with you and you're going to see what's happening via deadline deadlines very good with their box office sources so you guys know it made 5.2 million on that thursday night preview number now what makes that number even worse, because 5.2 is not great, okay? And I'll tell you why in a second. You you clearly know that's not a big number. But it also includes Wednesday. So you really had like a half a night in Wednesday and then a full night on Thursday, and you only came up with 5.2. We knew we were in trouble right off the bat, right? You knew it, I knew it. And, and look here, as I scroll down, and you see the current three-day outlook for light year is $55 million plus dominion is 53.4 and that could i mean listen it's going to be super close no one expected this to happen this is why it's a story okay lightyear is a film that initially had an 80 plus million dollar opening number on it weeks ago and now we're talking about not just 70 not 60 but very likely something in the 50s, $55 million. And again, go back to that Thursday number, 5.2 million. That is so far off of Pixar's recent, you know, they had a few films that went straight to streaming, Soul, Turning Red, Luca. So go back to their last theatrical film, which would have been Toy Story 4, right? 12 million on a Thursday. So you're doing less than half of that for light years. So you know you're already in trouble. I thought it would pick up and maybe it will. But but the problem is <laughs> is that deadline's usually right. Deadline has very good box office numbers on Friday late at night. You know, it's 11:30 on the East Coast, uh 8:30 here on the West Coast and they already have a number projected of about 55. Now when they put that number out there at 55, it's the chances of it going like to 75 or 80 is very low, okay? If anything, it could pop to maybe 60. This is a problem, okay? So we need to talk about why it's crashing. I want to get your comments. So comment away. Let's discuss. I think there's a number of issues, okay? No question whatsoever. Tim Allen being replaced as the voice is problematic for a lot of moviegoers. Maybe not for you. Wasn't so much for me. Do I think the film's better with Tim Allen voicing it? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But do I think it is totally harmful and destroys the film the fact that you've got evans voicing it no but it is an issue okay and then you go back and you talk about obviously the 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 kiss and and the relationships in the film that is an issue for some people as well not for me very likely not for you as well but again when we talk about films and their success at the box office, you got to remember it is a wide swath of society that goes to these movies and they take their kids and they want a certain thing. Whether you agree with it or not, that's just the reality of the marketplace. So tonight you're looking at a possible $55 million opening for this film. We'll have a number tomorrow morning and we can just go ahead and you know get the multiplier out and figure out what it's going to be. But I'm telling you, if it's 55, this is a bad number. There's no way to spin this. So let's make sure that's clear, that if it ends up being 55, I don't want to hear like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. There, there's no spinning. It's it's a very much of an underperform. We're going to find out. So we'll get to the comments in a minute. Let's also talk about Ezra Miller. Apparently, Discussing Film has a quote here from Deadline saying that Warner Brothers is not going to be involved in Ezra going forward. And the thing is, the weird thing, I've read this article like five different times, this, this Deadline article about Ezra Miller and The Flash. It talks about Zaslov. Here it is. I've got it up right now. So it talks about Zaslov taking over, and he's got to make this big decision about The Flash, which comes out, as you guys know, basically a year from now, June 23rd. So one year from now, The Flash is going to be out, and they're saying it's Zaslov's first movie crisis. Very clearly, we know that with what's happened with Ezra Miller. And um, just just reading through this, Zaslov made clear his desire to grow the DC Universe to MCU scale, has all the ingredients in the first foot forward in The Flash. $200 million, by the way. And don't forget that this film has done very well in test screenings. We've talked about that 
uh, several times. The test screenings on this are very high. The number, the grade on this is very good. So Warner Brothers know they have a good film. Uh, but are we going to get to the film? Now, discussing film is saying that Warner Brothers has a quote in here saying they're not going to work with him going forward. That's kind of assumed. I don't see it in here. That said, maybe it is I'm missing it. Someone pointed out to me, hit me up in the comments and tell me what I'm missing. But that's kind of assumed, right? We know that Warner Brothers is not going to sign up to do another anything with Ezra Miller right now. And probably ever. So really, that's almost like stating the obvious. It's like stating tonight. It's it's Friday night at 840 Pacific right now. You're just stating something that is very clearly fact. We know that. The question is, what happens to The Flash as a film theatrically? Does it go to HBO Max? It's just a continuing, absolute, unending nightmare for Warner Brothers and, and this the Ezra Miller situation. I want to get your comments. Let's get into it right off the bat. We've got Lightyear and we've got Flash tonight. Two very big stories. Lightyear is so intriguing to me because... I, I really thought this film would perform better than it is going to perform. And I think I know why it's not. We talked about the two reasons. And and I think that also the fact that it's it's a decent film. It's not a great film. And that's another problem. But if it loses Dominion this weekend, can you imagine? <laughs> wow. I mean, that's going to look really bad for Disney uh, if this ends up at a 55 number and then ends up possibly losing to Dominion in weekend number two. Before we get into comments, tonight's football kit, I grabbed it out of the closet. Here it is. It is Aston Villa tonight from the pre uh, English Premier League. And uh, there we go. Let's get into the comments. Here we go. Boom. Let's do it here on this Friday night again. Thank you for uh, tuning in here. I mean, listen, it's rare that we have the studio on on a Friday night. But when we have big stories and I'm not at a bar, <laughs> we can do this. So here we go. Let's get into it. Beantown Brandon. Uh, hey, Eric, happy to be here for a special Midnight Movie Talk Friday edition. Thank you for joining, Brandon. Really appreciate it. Yes, indeed. This is a special edition. Lonely Lizard, I don't think the same-sex kiss is why it is crashing. I think it has to do with not crystal clear marketing, not getting Tim Allen's blessing for the new buzz. We know that. He sent out a, a shade tweet the other day from Disney World talking about uh, something about pansexual. Uh, I I don't remember the exact phrasing of the tweet, but uh, I think that clearly he is not did not get the blessing for this film and Disney devaluing uh, Pixar sending things to Disney Plus. As you guys know, Soul, that was in the middle of things being shut down. So that obviously was going to be shifted there. And then you had Luca and then Turning Red. I think Turning Red should have been theatrical and it would have done a really good number. The funny thing is Turning Red could be doing a $55 million number at that at that spot. It was in a really good spot at that point. And now you have Lightyear looking like 55, 60 million, which again is not a great number. And exactly right, Brandon, it's in serious trouble. I don't want to hear any articles that spin this if it ends up being 55, 60. I mean, it's just very, it's far below where really it should be. I mean, look at what Toy Story, Toy Story 4, let me pull up the box office, Toy Story 4. So Toy Story 4 was a billion dollar film worldwide. Okay, a billion. This is obviously not going to get to a billion. So right off the bat, we're in trouble. Let's see what the opening number was on it. It was definitely over 100. Um, and again, at that point, people were like, why do we even have a Toy Story 4? And it still was able to do this. Now, before anyone says anything, such as here, okay, $120 million opening. So it's $120 million for Toy Story 4. And you guys are going to say, well, Toy Story 4 came out in, was it 2019, right? Uh, you know, it came out before COVID and blah, blah, blah. I, I get it. It was right before COVID. It ended in theaters. Basically, the last day in theaters was December 5th. It came out summer of 2019. I understand, and I think it's it's fair enough. I'll give you a little bit of that. But listen, you can't use that as the primary force of your argument. The, the primary, the crux of your argument is that it is not the same market conditions really then why is top gun maverick at over 400 million domestic and coming up on and likely will hit 1 billion worldwide how did no way home go to almost 2 billion how did uh dominion open at it's over 400 almost 500 million worldwide i think it's over 500 how are all these other films doing well and then light years can open with 55 you can't use that argument because if everything else was flat then you could say well this is flat the problem is everything else is not flat. Everything else is looking like 2019 again. Maverick, absolutely looking like 2019. Hell, it's looking like 2010. I mean, it's looking like old school box office. This thing is just killing it. So 
this tells me there are major issues here. And I think we know that, first of all, as the Lonely Loser just said, the same sex kiss. That is that is absolutely an issue for some people. OK, we're just saying in the broad scheme of looking at the whole audience, some people have an issue with that. OK, we're not talking about whether it's right or wrong. That's not what's happening. Here. We're talking about people having an issue with it. Then. We're also talking about the fact that you have Tim Allen being replaced by Chris Evans, and a lot of people were not happy about that. So you have two major problems. And then also, did did we really need a Lightyear movie? There's that too. I remember watching this trailer, um, you know, when it first debuted months ago, going, "This doesn't look that good." Now I do like the film more than the trailer because Socks is so great, right? Socks is just so that saves the picture, but it's still not really the best Pixar film ever made by any means. I mean, I would take Soul over Lightyear. Uh, I would take Lightyear over, I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I'd take it over both Luca and Turning Red. But again, those are not highly rated Pixar films. Uh, AJ, good evening to you. Lightyear is doing terrible everywhere except, uh, is that LA? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, listen, here's the deal. It, it's It's got to be doing pretty good numbers in LA, right? And I, but the problem is, is those flyover states. We talk about that so often. These markets, Dallas, you know, my hometown, Columbus, Ohio, Pittsburgh, uh, these places where it's a little more conservative, right? So will the numbers be as high there? And, and unfortunately, the, the, the fact of it is, is that there are conservatives out there who have an issue with the film. And uh, for whatever, certainly you can disagree with that. That's, that's your prerogative. And it certainly is, is warranted. But you have to understand that it's in play. Okay, that's that's the point of this. So that's what's going to happen. We do the autopsy on Sunday night. We'll be back here on Sunday night and we'll talk about the actual number. But I'm telling you right now, if it's 55, everything that we say here tonight is very valid. Everything, all the points of why this film is not succeeding. One, pissing off conservatives. Two, uh, Tim Allen getting replaced, pissing off conservatives. It's adjacent, right? And then also, did we really need a light year movie? Those are your your main questions. We're waiting here for the cinema score. If it gets below an A minus cinema score, we're in real trouble. I mean, that is the first of all, it's going to be the lowest Toy Story cinema score. Ever, you know, of all the Toy Story movies, nothing's got below an A. So if it gets A minus, that's already below all that. And then if it gets to a B plus, watch out. But I mean, listen, the legs on this are going to be in trouble too because it's not opening, uh, you know, that well. It's crashing worldwide. It's beyond politics, Aaliyah. However, we do not have cinema score. Uh, we don't know yet, but I, I will say the other issue, we have a bunch of things in play, but another one of the major issues is the fact that we have so much in the marketplace, but not just that, okay? Because, you know, Dominion's a week old and Maverick is now, is it, God, week four? So it's really old, but it's still killing it. Here's the problem, is, as I've told you this many times, and this is what we're seeing as well here tonight, is that when you run into the wake of multiple films, your film's going to suffer, no matter how good it is. Now, in this case, I don't think that's the only reason, but I'm adding another reason, because you're running into the, the tail end of Dominion, obviously Maverick's still going, so it takes available eyes out of the marketplace, available butts out of seats, because they don't go to the movies all the time. I went to the movies three times this week i think i watched four or five films this week two on screeners and three at movie theaters so that's a lot to go to the movie theater maybe it's four times this week most people don't go four times in like four months so when you go to a movie like maverick or dominion you usually don't go right back to the box office you don't go back to the theater the next weekend that is what is happening as well there's a whole bunch of things in play but i think everything that i brought up about lightyear is absolutely a component in why this film is underperforming if it is at a 55 million even at 60 i have it as an underperform unless this gets to 75 that is pretty much my low bar for this film before I say that is acceptable enough. Anything below that number, which I think we're absolutely going to see, then it is a disappointment. Don't let anybody spin that, okay? I was getting into it with Jeff ERC on, on Box Office today on Twitter. He, I don't know why he's defending it the way he is, and I, I, I wish I wouldn't pop him up and, and get into it, but you can't. You can't have a dog in the fight when we do these things now granted i love theatrical you guys know that okay you know that i'm very passionate about all things that are at a movie theater that said i'm also objective and i understand why something is working or failing and i can call it as that and it's there's objectively this film at 55 million is not is a failure it is not i'm not saying it's the biggest bomb in the history of movies but i'm telling you it is a failure uh is not a good number 
Um, Brandon, again, not having Tim Allen was a mistake. Also believe audiences were blindsided by what the movie was really about. I saw Peter post a paper. Yeah, you saw that thing on the door. That long, it was like at an art house, I think in Philadelphia, basically saying, hey, this is not your typical toy story, blah, 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 going through all these things so people didn't get pissed off. Uh, I didn't I didn't really have that problem with the film. I don't know why someone would. I think that's, uh, they, they, I don't understand that, that thinking. That said, they posted on there, so someone must have been complaining about it. But again, I, I do believe that this film is better with Tim Allen as the voice. I do. That's not a knock on Chris Evans, okay? He did a good job. The difference is very simple. Tim Allen's a comedian, okay? Lightyear, Buzz, is a character that's basically kind of dim-witted, right? He believes all of his all of his own shit, okay? So you need somebody who's able to voice that comedic at a level that is a comedian. Tim Allen is a very good comedian. You might not disagree with this. You might not agree with his politics, okay? That's a whole other issue. But... He is a funny comedian. When he was on, I mean, that show, God knows that, what was it? Home Improvement. Huge. My God, that show was so big because Tim Allen was generally a funny guy. Um, and and I think over the over the time, we've obviously seen people say, oh, he's conservative, so therefore he sucks, which I don't ever like about anybody uh, short of being, you know, basically horrendously evil person. I'm like, okay, uh, I think that having Tim Allen not on The Voice is absolutely hurting the film. I, I would agree with that. If you guys are, let me know, but tell me. That I'm right, that Chris Evans, even though he's very good doing the voice, Chris Evans doing the voice doesn't have that level of comedic timing and just the voice that Tim Allen would have given this that would have made the film. I just think the film's better. I do. It's not about it's not worse because of Chris Evans. It just is better with Tim Allen. Is that I think that's the best way to put it. You know, it's funny. I talked about that with the black phone. So while I remember this, because I'm going to forget this at some point, uh, black phone. Okay, you guys, maybe you haven't seen it. Maybe if you have, here's my problem with the black phone. It's the same thing we just talked about with Tim Allen in a way. Um, Ethan Hawke plays the bad guys. You guys know in the black phone here. Here's the issue. Ethan Hawke's generally a likable guy, right? So he primarily plays likable characters. So when he plays a villain, it's harder for me to access and believe that that guy is so so it's similar what I'm saying here. It's all about casting. Casting is so important to a film. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying the black phone doesn't work because of Ethan Hawke. What I am saying is that the black phone is even better if you put, I always forget the name of the polka dot man from Suicide Squad, that actor. You know that strange looking dude who's bad, like always just creepy. If you let him be the face of the, the bad guy in the black phone, it's even better. I'm just, these are little things that matter. Little things. I still really, trust me, I really like the film. Black Phone. Uh, I, okay, Lonely Lizard, and I say that because now Walt Disney Animation Studios' next film coming out, Thanksgiving, Strange World, has LGBTQ elements. Yes, I know it does. And I don't want them removed. They're not going to remove those. I don't, I don't, you know, listen, will there be meetings behind closed doors about what happens here with Light Years? Light Year, when we go through the, you know, post-mortem, right? The Monday morning quarterback where we say what happened with this film if it ends up being a $55 million film or 57 or 58. Disney will have a meeting and they will discuss exactly what you're talking about right here at Lonely Lizard. There's no question about that. We're probably never going to hear that conversation. Obviously, they're going to keep that behind closed doors. I don't think that's going to change what they do with Strange World. I, I don't believe that's going to happen. Disney seems very much to stick to its guns, uh, except for you know taking some things out to appease other overseas markets like China we've seen, but but I just don't think they're going to do it. That said, they'll talk about it. I know it. Only thing that can save Lightyear is good legs. Agreed, AJ. Uh, and that's going to come down to the cinema score. By the way, I'm waiting for it. I literally have it up here. If someone sees it before me, please let me know. Cinemascore.com. Uh, we're up early. I mean, normally I'd be like sitting here waiting for it. It's coming up. Usually about 9 o'clock we get that. Give me one second. Let me pop it up. So uh, it is... It's, it's coming up right now. Let's see what we got. Nope, still nothing. If you see it, let me know. But if it's, I'll tell you, if it's an A-, minus, it's the lowest toy score story grade, cinema score grade in the history of, you know, Toy Story films. And it is Toy Story tangential. Obviously, you guys know it's a character from Toy Story. Um, so we'll see what that cinema score is. That's what the legs will indicate. Poor Pixar, though, man. I really hope these numbers don't make Disney think, okay, Lightyear is clearly proof that Pixar is better on Disney Plus than the theaters. I don't want Pixar screwed over anymore. I agree. I think we all agree with that, Lonely Lizard. No question. We need these films in theaters. We also need the short back. Bring the shorts back. 
I mean, bring the shorts back and put them in front of the films. I don't know what the thinking was to get rid of those. We talked about it, you know, last week when we discussed Lightyear when I came out of that film. Where's the short? Why is it not there? CNBC, Aaliyah again. CNBC has the article with crisis PR experts. They said that Warner Brothers needs to say or do something ASAP. That's what the meeting is here tonight. Again, as I go to deadline, I'm looking at this article and, and uh, you know, Disgusting Film has that tweet out there saying, hey, you know, they're never going to work with them again. And again, I, I, that's obviously very, very obvious. Hello. They're not going to work with them again. That's that I don't see it here. Um, you know, listen, it's a, they need, I think by Monday, here's what they're going to hope for. How often do we talk about this? When you have something that's going on and you're a major company and it's like a Friday, you just let it sit. You do not want to, you know, there's two things you can do. One, announce something very late on a Friday or option two, let it see if it simmers down over the weekend so by Monday it's not that big a deal. Because you guys know that most people on Saturday and Sunday check out, okay? They're not on Twitter as much. They're not, you know, in front of their phone checking out the news. They kind of zone out. They're going to the lake. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. I got a volleyball tournament. I'm going to a volleyball tournament. I'm not going to be watching Twitter all day versus like today, I, you know, was tweeting and doing things. I was sitting around. So, they had a choice to let it simmer down over the weekend, which I think is going to help. Um, but they're, at some point, they're going to have to say something. I would agree with that. Um, I feel like they're going to leave the flash as it is, never bring back Ezra Miller. I agree. I mean, that's obvious. I think I think that goes without saying. The fact that you know that quote's in there about they'll never work with them again. I mean, no shit. I mean, do you, yeah, let's hire him again for a movie, a two hundred million dollar tentpole, something else. Let's have him. Let's have him front some new, even anything, any Warner Brothers movie. No, they're not going to do that. So this is kind of just like when you say that, it's like again, no shit. Tell me something that's that is surprising, okay? Um, so we'll see. But it is. I know the test screen was very positive, okay? So it's it's at least a solid film. And it's a two hundred million dollar film. AJ again, Jurassic World might be light year this weekend. If that happens, yeah, no one really saw that happen, especially with uh, Dominion at about 55. And if this ends up at 55, Disney will absolutely shove this over the finish line so that it's not behind Dominion. You can, here's what happens. We talk about it all the time in box office. You can estimate your Sunday so they can throw a higher estimate on Sunday so they can get on top of Dominion. And then when the actual comes in on Monday, what, what the actual number was on Sunday, it goes below and then the stories have already been written that Lightyear's number one, even though it's not now because on Monday the actual flipped it. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's a PR play. It's a very smart play. I would do the exact same thing if I was Disney. I think Lightyear barely beats Dominion due to Father's Day and Juneteenth, getting more kids and families into theaters over the weekend. Top Gun Maverick will do very well on Father's Day, right? But I think Lightyear will too because it's it's a family film. And Dominion, I think all three of them will should do well on Sunday for Father's Day. Uh, so, and again, you know what else is very beneficial for all of these films? Anyone? NBA finals are over. You would have had a game seven on Sunday night. Do you know how many eyes would have been watching that, that now are going to be possibly in a movie theater? These are little things you got to pay attention to because it's huge. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Um, Joshua, here we go. Good evening to you. A uh, dude I don't know anymore. A year is a long time. If they can disprove the grooming accusations and keep Ezra locked up for a year, I think it can work. Remember what I said we need to do with Ezra Miller. This is not a joke. This is real. Find the house that you put the precogs in in Minority Report and stash him in the house with a bunch of books. No internet. There is no Wi-Fi in the house. You're going to live there with the precogs until... This film comes out, and then we're going to let you out of the Minority Report house. That's the best thing to do here. Ali, again, I'm getting the feeling Disney knew Lightyear would crash, did not send it to Disney Plus because the contract with uh, Chris Evans, and they did not want to deal with that. Uh, remember, the stars do have theatrical deals in place, so if that's the case, I can't confirm that. It would make sense to me. Um, it just It is a theatrical film. I mean, Lightyear is a theatrical film. And I think it would look really cool in 3D. I think if you're going to see that film, 3D might be the ticket. And I know it is in 3D at, at places. I think that might be the way to go if you're going to see Lightyear, if you're going to see it this weekend. I, I like it. But, you know, listen, earlier today I had my top five films of, you know, right now in theaters. Hold on. Give me a number. Okay. So here's what I have in theaters right now. 
Number one film in theaters right now, without question, is Top Gun Maverick for me. Top rated film. Number two is The Phantom of the Open, which I believe is available to a lot of you now. It is Sony Pictures classic. It's a great little film. And it is Mark Rylands. It's Sally Hawkins. Go see Phantom of the Open. The writer of Paddington 2 wrote that. It's a really smart script and just a lovely little film. Uh, Poser is a very small uh, indie film that is only in New York and L.A. If you're listening to my voice in New York or L.A., go see Poser. It is super cool, uh, very edgy, and what a debut by the two directors who did that. Then Brian and Charles is the new um, Focus Features. Really like that, too. That's a weird, delightfully strange, as I put it in the tweet. Weird movie, but really likable in 90-minute runtime. Can't lose with that. And then watch for the IFC movie. Those are your five best films right now. I don't have Lightyear in my top five. Uh, but these are all really good films. So you have a lot of time and you have options. So go see one of these films. If you if you have not seen any of the films I just mentioned, obviously Maverick you probably have seen. Fan of the Open you probably have not. Poser. Uh, Watcher, and then Brian and Charles. These are all very good films. We are finally getting into these cool little indie films. Not not overrated indie films. You know the one I'm talking about. The one that just became A24's biggest grossing film. Not like that. Not an overrated indie film. These are legitly awesome uh, little indie films. And I'll tell you what, Poser's great. You should really go see Poser. I think Chris Gore. Here he is. Good evening, Chris Gore. I don't have a – no, there's no trailer reactions for me. You know how I feel about trailers. Only time I watch trailers is if I'm forced to watch trailers, so I will not react to it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to start doing that. Oh, my God. Did you oh, – oh, there, that's my trailer reaction. You can cut and paste that in there. Do you think Scott Middleson is correct when he said Lightyear is Toy Story solo? It's an interesting way to put it. Did people really want solo? Uh, no. And also Solo's not great. And I think Lightyear's not great either. I think I do believe Lightyear's better than Solo, but I think that's a pretty good call by Scott. Uh, I only disagree with Scott when it comes to uh, his review of Maverick. I mean, five out of 10 for Maverick. I mean, no. Uh, no, Leah. Okay, so this is good. I wish he was here. Yeah, ERC, Jeff. And, and I listen, we've gone to movies together. I know Jeff. It's not like we just talk on Twitter. Uh, he's worried you're falling for conservative media spin. No, I'm not. I Listen. If I haven't told you guys this before, I'm telling you here tonight, I am a Libra. Do you know what that means? You guys know what a Libra is, right? Scales balanced. I am the ultimate scale balancing person. And I think that's what makes me very good at evaluating films. I don't let one side get too high or too low. I go in flat because I'm always about scales being even. So I am not falling for conservative media spin. No, I'm telling you it's real. It's absolutely real that these are problems that are, these are issues. I'm not going to call them problems. Because that obviously opens the door to something else. These are issues that some people have with Lightyear. And to ignore them and pretend they don't exist or the figment of imagination, that is not being balanced. That's not being objective. It's not being fair. And I think you guys know. You Do, do you guys really think I'm biased? Seriously. You've, you've been here for how many months now? And you've, you follow me on Twitter. Uh, hopefully, if you do, uh, you guys read my stuff. Do I am not biased, okay? I love theatrical. I admit this. But I'm still not biased. If a film bombs, it bombs. If theatrical is tanking, it's tanking. It's not. It's not. So what I'm saying is, is you know I'm balanced. So no, I'm calling out truth. And it, it isn't about politics. It's about realities of the way people are viewing Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear is going to be a hit on Disney+. Plus. Kevin, good evening to you. Yeah, probably. At this point, people seem to be waiting for that. That's what happens also when you put all your films on Disney+. Plus. You start to go, people expect them there, and they'll just wait. So maybe there's that, too. There's so many things. No, I have not seen Kenobi. Do not. <laughs> if I watch Kenobi, I would. Yeah, we'd have. A, let's talk about Kenobi. Listen, I'm a film guy. You know that, Chris. I'm film, 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 film. That's what we do here on Midnight Movie Talk. It's movie talk. It's not TV show talk. Uh, Kevin, again, Strange World's going to go straight to Disney+. Plus. No, it's not because it's an awards film. They will not do that. It will absolutely be in theaters. No question about it. Uh, Disney Animation Studio is having to come back. Yes. I would agree with that. Uh, Eric, you're absolutely right. Where are all the Pixar shorts? We just said that. Bow was great. I think that was a very good, and that was the last one. What was that in front of? Was that, uh, oh my God, what the heck was that in front of? I don't even remember. 
whatever that was in front of, that's the last one. I don't know what they're doing. It is a shame. They need to get that back. Um, do you think Lightyear failed with good promotion? Maybe no one was interested in the movie. I think that that's absolutely one of the components we said. Do people really want a Lightyear movie? Uh, and absolutely, where are the Pixar shorts? These are this is a, why. Why did you get rid of them? Makes no sense to me. Really bizarre decision. Gavin, good evening to you. Lightyear is forgettable as it gets. Dull all around with an awful lost a- last act. I, I'm not as harsh on the film, but I understand what you're saying. It doesn't make it certainly doesn't make me go, oh my god, this is this is a great film. Uh, hold on, I'm checking cinema score. Checking the cinema score. It's about nine. It's nine oh four. We might have it. We might have it. Give me one second. Don't ask me why I'm looking at my phone and not checking the computer. It's because for whatever reason, the cinema score site loads better on your phone. No, there is still no. There's still no grade. No grade for Lightyear. As soon as you guys see the cinema score, let me know. If it's A minus or lower, it is the lowest grade ever for a Pixar. Uh, for a Toy Story movie, not Pixar, but uh, Toy Story. Uh, do you think the media attention on Disney's not so secret gay agenda affected the box office. Chris, you missed the beginning. We talked about that. And I think that it absolutely affected the box office because we're not talking about whether it's right, the views. Okay. We're not going to discuss it. We're talking about people have the views, not whether they're correct or incorrect. Okay. I think we all know that it's, I certainly don't believe those things, but there are people who do. So in a marketplace where people are paying to go to your movie and if a certain segment doesn't show up and that's the reason, then that's one of the reasons why the movie's not doing as well. Okay. We're not talking about whether it is, it is obviously abhorrent or whatever you, however you want to view it. It's still an issue that's real. Okay. To some people. So when you, when you're doing the autopsy of this, Essentially, when we get to the Sunday night and we actually have the number, you have to include that as one of the things that happened. You have to. Now, whether it, it it's it's not everything. I'm not suggesting that's the only thing, but I'm saying it's a it's a bunch of things. Do people want to see Lightyear? What about Tim Allen's voice? What about that? What about all these things? You got to throw it all in there. It, it creates this composite, right, of the truth and what actually happened versus, you know, it's just bomb. That's not there's no analysis to that, right? Uh, back to Lonely Lizard. I feel like Thor is going to bring Thor will be the biggest movie this summer, even bigger than Maverick. I've said that now for a very long time. And but again, that is incumbent on Thor, Love and Thunder being great, not just good, but great Marvel, like at least an A cinema score or higher. In other words, really hitting across everything. Everything works in the film largely. OK, and I think we're going to get that. If we do, Thor will be the number one movie of the summer. I'm telling you right now. Good evening, Simone. Uh, we, we we missed you last night at Movie Twitter. I saw you at the Black Phone, though. This is very. This is what I just talked about. Thank you for noticing the same thing. Ethan Hawke is too pretty and well known for being likable. Uh, completely correct. Now, Polka Dot Man is David Dastmalshian. Is that how you say it? Someone help, give me pronunciation. I know who he is. From Dune, also from, of course, Suicide Squad, the 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 remake. He is Polka Dot Man. He is creepy as hell, that dude. He's just, his face and his aura is designed to be serial killer, right? Okay? And he would have been better. Now, what happened? I'm not, again, Ethan Hawke, good, solid, but, but, but. If you put David in there, the film is creepier which benefits the film. These are little things that I I like to watch and I go, what about if you would have changed this? Would that have made the film better? And you know what my number one thing for that always is? It's always, can you make the movie shorter? And if the answer is yes, then then you know that's the first thing you got to do is make the movie tighter. By the way, the movies I recommend, so so I told you about Fan of the Open, which is a little hair long, but still not over long. Then you have Brian and Charles, which is not at all. It's a like a tight 90. And then you have Poser, which is 90. These are all very watchable because they're short. It helps. I'm telling you. Uh, here it is. Oh, no, wait. Oh, I thought you had a Leah. I thought you had the A minus cinema score already. Come on, cinema score. Come through to me. It's time. It's like we're doing it live. They need to give us the score. A minus would technically be okay. I would agree that it's okay. But again, A minus would be the lowest cinema score ever for a Toy Story movie. Nothing's gotten below an A. Interestingly enough, Toy Story 3 got an A, not an A plus. Weird, right? But even Toy Story 4 got an A. So just so you know. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Latin America. Okay, sorry. Yes, thank you very much. I, I've never seen L-A-T-A-M. I, it makes perfect sense, so thank you for letting me know that. Uh, Gavin, how do you think Elvis will affect Top Gun's box office? 
I think Elvis is in a really good spot. I'm going to see it on, I believe, Tuesday night. Those were the fan screens. I want to go to one of those, see the reaction. So I think that it's in a great spot because Maverick now has been out for a month. So even though it's still going strong, the older audience probably already saw it like a week ago. Like now we're seeing, we're getting like second views and third views at this point. So I think that you have enough time that down the refractory period. <laughs> That's it. I, I'm using that going forward. It is the movie gore refractory period. Okay. And, and that's what you need. You have to have that time where you coop and you regenerate and you're ready to go with, with your full vigor at the box office. Oh Lord. And that's how, that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to get that number back up. So we'll talk about Elvis over the, over next week. Next, a whole total thing we're talking about all next week. Um, Watcher holding better than crimes of the future because it's a much better film. Jay Chan. I mean, Watcher is a watchable film crimes of the future. You guys know, I don't want to do this on a Friday. I was having a nice night. I wanted to jump on and talk to you guys for a few minutes. And, and I, if crimes, of the future is, is essentially an unwatchable film. OK, and IFC's biggest box office run. It, it's a very accessible film. I love Micah Monroe in this film. She deserves even bigger films, but she's very good in Watcher. Go see Watcher. Go see Fan of the Open. Go see Brian and Charles. Poser if you're in New York and L.A. These are all really solid films. And that's why I put that tweet out. If you missed it, go look for it. I just put it out like, you know, a few hours ago. These are the five best films in theaters right now. And number five was not Lightyear. And I mean, that'd be like number seven or something for me. Um, I would probably have that behind Dominion. If you can believe it, they're about the same dominion and light. You're about rape, about the same, about a seven. Uh, my whole family is alert on Elvis and everyone wants to go watch it. I do have a good feeling. Elvis will be a solid box office King Two hour, 45 minute runtime is concerning, but remember this is an adult drama, right? Young kids. They're trying to get them in there. Boz Lerman has a decent track record, obviously at the box office, but I mean, I think that anything over 45 is solid for an opener. We'll talk about that again for throughout the week. So we'll get delve into that more uh, coming up on Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Thursday. Uh, Chris Gore, smash the like button. Thank you. You know, Chris, I just I wish you could just. I'm gonna pop you up. I should send you a thing and have you jump on. You're uh, you're probably at a bar. That would be really weird. But thank you, Chris, for all the support and help. Yeah, help me reach a thousand subs. We're 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 climbing, okay? And I really appreciate everybody. That's right. Get monetized. Isn't that nice? Uh, you know, listen, guys, I really appreciate everybody who watches and, and tunes in here and we talk about this building a community. Ultimately, it's a community of 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 film lovers. I mean, that's what we are here. And, and I hope to be able to guide you to really strong films that maybe you're not aware of. I mean, that's those are ultimately I mean, you guys know Lightyear, you know, Dominion, you know, Maverick, you know, those films. What you don't know is Poser. Poser is a film you probably have never heard of. And it's a film that I highly recommend, and it's not available for where you are right now unless you're in New York or L.A., but that's what I want to do. I want to point you out to those films. I want to express my love for Ghost Story, Good Time, you know, when it first is out. I know it's A24 films, but I'm still, those are smaller films. So that's kind of the point here is to really talk about those films and get a bigger audience with those films. Uh, Simone, again, you don't think Nope will be a summer blockbuster? I do. I think Nope's going to be, I think it's going to be a surprise hit, uh, and I think Black Phone is very much going to be a hit for Universal. So Universal's got a really strong summer coming up. You've got Black Phone coming out next weekend. You've got Nope at the end of July, and you've got Minions in July 4th. Minions is going to pop higher right now. Minions is already higher because of Lightyear going down. Remember, when you have audience going to a movie, it sucks the oxygen out of the marketplace for a similar genre film. So in other words, if I had Lightyear this weekend and it opened at 100 and Minions was next weekend, Minions is going to get destroyed because everyone just went to see Lightyear in the same genre. But you're going to have space and you're going to have a film that underperformed Lightyear. So Lightyear underperforming means Minions goes up. So you take Minions number and push it up because it just makes sense. I mean, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Think about the psychology of that. Uh, Jay Chan again, Pixar should be theatrical exclusive, non-negotiable, or they should leave Disney. I don't know what the contract is, but I feel like that's never going to happen. They're like part of the, they're part of the family, like part of the mob family at this point. If you try to leave, I don't think that's going to be good for Pixar or anybody up there in Northern California. They are locked in to that deal with Disney. But again, guys, listen, back to the top story here tonight. It is light year if this thing ends up at a 55 million dollar opening or let's say 58 59 even 60 uh it is it's an underperform 
It is it is absolutely a disappointment. And however you want it, you're going to hear lots of different ways they're going to try to spin this over the next 48 hours. My job is to remain objective as a film reporter and obviously as a film evaluator. And I can tell you right now that a $55 million opening on Lightyear, when at one time we really thought it was going to be in the 80s, possibly 90, maybe even 100. And now you have it at not half, but almost right? 55 or 60. That is 60% of where it could have been at the high. That is an underperform and a big time disappointment. So again, we'll wait for that number. And when we get the number, we're going to have a lot to talk about on Sunday night. Cinema scores coming out soon. I'll tweet it out to you. I'm sure. Listen, I think it's a minus or better. If it's below a minus, we got a problem. Okay. It's really that simple. There's not much more to discuss about that. If it's a B plus watch out. But I'll see you back here on Sunday night for the traditional midnight movie talk on Sunday night. Again, guys, I really appreciate you watching. And uh, I'll see you in uh, 48 hours. Have a good rest of your Friday night.